Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Sin Stuff. This is my Juno 106, and I've got a problem with it. We're gonna fix it. So what's the problem with this Juno 106? You saw I did a whole restoration on this. I replaced all the voice chips. I installed a Kiwi 106 upgrade. I did quite a bit of work to this, yet I've still got a problem. Well, it's a new problem that's emerged since I did that restoration. I think you'll be able to hear it. There's only audio coming out of one channel. I've narrowed it down to two things. One is the volume potentiometer and two is the actual connectors. Now I do have a bit of hum on there as well, which I think is also the connectors. I originally, when I did the restoration, I cleaned the potentiometer and I cleaned the connectors. But obviously on a 40 year old synth, apparently that wasn't enough. But if I modify the volume, I can get some sound out of the right channel. So I did order some parts from Centaur. I have ordered a new potentiometer and uh, actually, well, I got two potentiometers. Oh, one for the portamento as one, because if one's bad, the other one's probably bad as well. And I got two audio connectors for the output. We're going to open this up, trace the audio, make sure that is the issue. We're going to replace these regardless, but uh, we're going to get this thing working again. This is fairly easy to take apart. You can see I've, I've actually got it on. And one of the things I did was plug in a set of headphones into the headphone jack. And the problem does not exist in the headphone jack. I have both channels equally on the headphone jacks, which tells me the problem is actually going to most 100%, almost 99.9% .9 going to be one of these output jacks. I'm still going to do the volume and portamento knobs. There's only so much you can do with uh, cleaning and lubrication of 40 year old pots. So I am going to turn it off, unplug it. I learned the hard way. Remember I, when I was working on this before, I, I gave myself a mighty jolt by touching one of those hot terminals right over on this side. In case you forget, this is what that looks like. This uh, 5330 along with these two transistors is the analog side, which has quite a few different voltages it produces. Uh, this, ow, ow, son of a Ugh. By the way, don't touch a transformer when uh, the power is on because um, that's 120 volts. That really hurts. Uh, so I'm always talking about how you should be careful about when you're doing this kind of work because there's lethal voltages. And uh, yeah, that's why. Don't do what I just did. All right, so in here we see the original voice board and then the, these are the replacement analog uh, device or analog, excellent, I forget the name of it, but the uh, voice chips that I, and filter chips and envelope chips that I put in. The output, which also contains the chorus, is this right here. And then over on the left side here, we've got the, Portamento. So we're going to remove the audio output and the volume portamento control boards. So I, you saw me pause there and look because as I pulled this out, I'm looking at the soldering on here. I'm like, this looks awful lot like my soldering work. It does not look like a wave solder like the rest of the joints on there. So I went back and had a look at the original restoration video that I did. And sure enough, I have video of me replacing these two potentiometers. So these are new, and the two that I bought from Centaur are of no use whatsoever. So I'm just gonna put this back in, because obviously it's fine. And like I said, the problem is gonna be these, these jacks. So let's just get to work on replacing those jacks. So because these harnesses only disconnect at one end, they don't disconnect from this end. They're, they're soldered into the board. And in order to get this harness off, that means I have to disconnect this and all of these and undo all of these wire ties and just half dozen things. I'm not gonna do all that. So instead of taking this into my bench to do the work, I'm just gonna do it right here. So I've put a couple towels down just to protect the uh, keyboard. And we will take off the two locks that lock these in place. This is 
what Roland did on the Juno to save money instead of using nuts. They just use these little things that flip on there. And then I have brought my desoldering pump with me, which is currently heating up. And we'll use that to desolder these uh, two jacks from the board. It's meant for doing through hole stuff, but it should work. Honestly, if you're ever gonna be doing rework that involves desoldering things, you owe it to yourself to get a desoldering pump like this one. It's the best way to pre prevent damaging these delicate old boards and make quick work out of uh, desoldering and rework. All right, let's see how that has worked. There's one. Here's the other one. Okay, so there's the ones we've pulled out. Here are the ones that came from Centaur. And they will just pop right back in there. You know what? I think I'm gonna take this back plate off. It's gonna make this a lot easier to get them back in without bending the pins. Unfortunately, that means I have to remove all the, uh, the stays for all the jacks. There we go. Shortcuts rarely make it shorter. There's the new jacks in place, and now I will solder those in. And you can see uh, the uh, nicely soldered straight things there. So let's uh, reinstall this backplate. One thing you always forget is this grounding strap has to go on the bottom in between this metal piece and the outside bracket and it gets screwed in place there. And so when you install the screw on the back, it gets held in place. Now I just have to put the, the side screws back in to fasten the top on and we'll give it a test. MIDI cables, power cable, audio cables. All right, let's turn it on, see how it sounds. I say it's fixed. So that was all it was, was a bad jack. And that was a very simple and inexpensive fix that pretty much anybody could do. And I hope this is of some help to anybody that has an old synthesizer like this. For people like myself who love these old synths, Centaur is a godsend because you can still get all the parts for these old synths to be able to do fixes like this. I'm not saying that Anybody that has no experience whatsoever should go tarry into these old things, but you saw what I did there. Anybody that has any kind of experience soldering could do that minor fix that I just did there. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And hey, like this video if you like it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.